in this very small self-portrait by Goya, painted three or four years after the illness which left him completely deaf. Uh, we are looking at a man who has seen death, uh, who has been very, very close to death, who has lost his hearing. He will never hear again for the rest of his life. He has come back through a slow convalescence and is really now back to pretty good health, but is beginning to remake his career. Um, he had been, of course, an extraordinarily important figure at the court. He had spent many years of his life painting huge preparatory cartoons for tapestries. And suddenly, at a blow, he was reduced um, to a very weak uh, and ill individual. But the strength of his character, which I think shines through in this portrait, um, together with a deep sense of tragedy, tragedy that he managed to overcome by his willpower and by his desire to continue his work as an artist. It is a very, very powerful portrait in spite of its very small size. It's not exactly a miniature, which would be maybe one quarter of that size, but it is a very, very long way from any of his face-to-face -face self portraits on canvas, which are normally life size. And if we look at this work in detail, we see that it's painted almost like a watercolor. Um, it shows the artist looking rather like Beethoven with a romantic dishevelment of his hair and this incredibly intense gaze. It shows him, I think, in a symbolic moment where he knows that he is back on track. He is painting. He has a canvas on an easel in front of him. We can't see his brushes. We can't see what he's painting, but his arm and hand at the end of it have moved in front of the surface of the canvas. What we see is the back of the canvas. And it's on the back of the canvas that he has signed his name in very small letters down in the lower right-hand corner, Goya, simply. He painted this portrait during a year or a year and a half when we know very little about his movements. He went to Andalusia. Uh, there is no record of him having been commissioned to leave the court, but everyone knew that he was ill and he stayed away recovering. And during this year, um, he visited the Duchess of Alba on her estates um, at San Luca de Barameda. And it was no doubt there that he painted this portrait and gave it to her. So at this time, Goya is in fact preparing with drawings and preparatory drawings directly for engravings. He is preparing his great project for the Prince of Los Caprichos. This portrait, in a way, symbolizes his move from the earlier 18th century uh, period, when things may not have been perfect, uh, but there was a sense of innocence and joy. But the Enlightenment and the French Revolution and the things that were, com were to come are all foreshadowed in this small work. It is interesting that some years after the publication of the Capriccios in 1799, so about three years after Goya painted this particular little portrait, 1811 is, of course, a year after Goya began to engrave the Disastres de la Guerra. And I think what is going to happen is also symbolized in this portrait. Um, this incredibly serious artist sitting at his easel and in the background in his studio, we can imagine all his etching materials, um, his drawing materials spread out around him. 
and he is going to throw himself um, into making another great series of prints, the Fatales Consecuencias de la Sangriente Guerra en España con Bonaparte. All this, it seems to me, is summed up in this very small and very moving work. <laughs>